And we are live. We are live with Look Who I Got Here. We are on the phone with Truth Convoy. Truth Convoy, Denise Matow, the uh, YouTuber. You've seen her out there. You know her face. You've seen her videos. How you doing, Denise? Oh, I'm okay, considering. You've had better days? I said I'm okay. I know. You've, I said you've had better days, right? You've had better days. Oh, yeah. Month? I said, yeah. Considering how things have been lately, I'm, I'm about as good as you can get. Right, right. So, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about um, death cults. Talk me down. Is it real? Is it something that is, it something that is um, uh, you need to grow up, young woman? You need to grow up, young girl, because you're all in your head. There's no such thing as a death cult. You, you're hanging out with the wrong people, right? Or is it real? Is it a real phenomenon where there's really bad people out there in the world looking to, looking to uh, prey on others? Now, you're, you're in, I watched your video. You called them groomers, groomed. You said they're targeting 60 to 7 year old uh, age group. It's a cult. Bullied into being used, uh, and we're supposed to take it. You called it patriotic stalking. And, uh, uh, do you, tell me about it. Well, I think that there's um, more than one level to what's going on. Um, one of the reasons they... They use different age groups for different purposes, but when I say they, I mean it's a a uh, it's a culture that seems harmless, you know, like doing uh, rock and roll things with blood gore stage settings. That's, that's, that's no big deal. It's it's you know it, it's what they what some people release their tension at. But then you have something going on from a few people who are very carefully coordinating what they're doing. And they use, first they use death as a, a, uh, a point of contact. Death. You Finding said death. People who, who have death in the family gives you, if you're, reason for knowing somebody is that there is a common experience with death in the family, then at one level that's normal, but at another level, if you're seeking out strangers for that purpose, that's where you're starting to get into the cult stuff. And when it's attached to then manipulating those people into other actions, that's when it becomes a dangerous cult because this is what this political group is doing um, in terms of, I, and we see it at the bigger level. I mean, war is a death cult, okay. Right. But at the weird, crazy level that we're seeing in these YouTube social groups or internet social groups, forgive mm -hmm. me, I, I live in a, in a YouTube bubble. But, right. um, me too. <laughs> The, the thing of seeking out people to make that connection and then manipulating that connection is how they are recruiting and then radicalizing because you can, you can tell a lot about a person if you can get into a bonded friendship over death in the family. Before too much longer, you've got that person's button. You know how to manipulate that person and then... From there, you move into the extremism and the terrorism. Right. So you have a personal experience with this. You, you, um, I know that you had a, uh, a situation in 2011 or 12. Your daughter, you were, she was on a college campus, allegedly suicide, suicide or murder. You suspect it was murder. And it was you, 2010. 2010. And you suspect that... It was some sort of uh, death cult, uh, online death cult. Was it an online thing where she, you believe she got sucked no, into it? No, we were familiar with some of these people in real life. One of them is online, and it was through 
having to deal with him, I was dealing with him for years just as a personal stalker. And the, the family knew about him, and they treated everything at the personal level, just like most people do, which is how they get you. You, just, you don't see the whole picture. Right. But then I noticed, I knew that he had spoken of being in a gang. I knew that he was using forums in the anti-cult world, particularly the what used to be called the Rick Ross Forum, and then it changed into the Cult Education Institute Forum. He was using that one to set up little hunting parties, and he was recruiting in Facebook. He was recruiting military people. He was a military reject himself. So I know that was going on as that person doing it. When he showed up in my uh, YouTube chats under my videos, I then saw a couple of people show up alongside him. And while I was blocking him, I was looking at two other profiles, which turned out to be the same person. And I said, he's here with his gang. And that's when I made the decision. And it was right at the point of the Q hijack. That's what, I mean, that's how I keep the time straight in my head. Um, that January, or well, no, it was November because the Cuban hijack was right after that. It was November 17, and um, I said to myself, "I am going to smoke this guy and his gang out." And I thought it was going to be, you know, a handful of idiots, just stupid people. Right. But it turned into a much, much bigger thing, as you know, because it turned into connecting up with the entire political wing, which when you get above the, the street thug level and these military rejects, and you get above their level, you start getting into the political party. You get into both the Republican and Democrat parties. And then inside the regular political parties, you've got the fanatics, the fanatical cult. Like, in, I believe that inside the Clinton Party, there's the Clinton, I mean, the Clinton Party, the Democrat Party, there's a Clinton cult that really controls it. Right. Mm -hmm. Similar things in the Republicans, but I'm familiar with the Democrats. And mm -hmm. that's the cult. We ended up face to face with the very top level of that cult. And that's a death cult because they have been using. We, we were talking about, when I say we, I'm talking about myself and, and my, my people I grew up with and neighbors. Right. In Pittsfield, Massachusetts, back in the 1980s and 90s, we were talking about the death cult because they were taking over the arts. Mm -hmm. And our art studios, we, we were being told we needed to do this death art. And that's all it was, was an art movement. We didn't connect it to any of this. Right. Then there was the women's centers started to use um, violent killings of children as propaganda. And we started talking about the families of, of young murder victims uh, being pressured to become part of the propaganda machine. And so the death cult, I look, I've been looking at death cult in this Democrat Party context. Not all Democrats, but the, the controlling group in Massachusetts. That is what we were looking at. And it was years later, really only in recent years, that when I put the timeline together, the timeline of the death cult matches up with the timeline of the Whitey Bulger Mafia control. Mm -hmm. So there you go, right there. Ma I mean, Mafia, obviously, you even... People laugh at The Godfather, but there's a lot of truth in those movies. It is a death cult. Yeah. Well, the, you know that the Gambino crime guy, he just got shot by what this reporter suspects as being a, uh, not, not so much a mob hit, but an actual um, online cult. He went down the QAnon rabbit hole, and he was either convinced or convinced himself to go shoot the guy, shoot... Frankie Cali, boss of the Gambino crime family here in New York, or he, he, had, um, he went to Mayor de Blasio's house. He went uh, to a federal building to try to arrest Adam Schiff. 
Do you think he came up with all these ideas himself, or was it, you know, my thought? Here's what well, I want to know. I, Here, let I me, should blow your mind with something that I think is a fact that's in your documents that you have and have not looked at. Hmm? If you ever go back, and the reason uh, I don't want to bring up the name of another YouTuber that's going to cause things to, to go in another direction, mm-hmm. but... If we can go back to the Q, I refer to the Q hijack, right. and that is where the cult thing comes in. Um, about do you want me to tell you my personal belief about the Q thing? About 2017. Yeah, go ahead. It's your, it's your time. Go yeah. ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, my personal encounter with the Q thing, and what I still believe was true, was that originally it was set up as a kind of... of quiz game that was definitely part of a military project to try to break the cult hold that politics, because the military was watching the political stuff become cult-like. And so I believe that some good people did put the idea together that this quiz game would be a good way to help people think. And when I stumbled across it, that's exactly what I thought it was, was a political quiz game. Then it turned into the the craziness um, as there was that whole hijack thing that happened. That I recognized some of the cult members coming in through that hijack. And so um, the 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 um, Ask me a question to get me back on track. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I well, here's what I'm. Right you, you have a lot of you have a lot of information. You see the big picture. What I'm what I'm concerned with, and I know I know you've ha- you're having watching your video series, watching your stuff. I know that you're having problems with individual um, thugs, uh, bullies, gang stalkers. These these gangs. And I just wanted to say, like when I was a kid, right, I grew up in New York, right. I know what a gang is. No one admits yeah. that. No one admits they're in the gang. It's like the mafia. Oh, Nobody. Yeah. There's no. There's no. Oh, I signed up for the mafia, and uh, here's my here's my badge and my uh, you know my certificate. No, you're you hang out with the gang and you're in the gang. You act like the gang. You you chat with the gang. You you interact with the gang. You back up the gang. If someone hits a gang member, that's like hitting you. That's a gang. Yeah, well, you, you want to know a funny story about that? Mm-hmm. True, true story, okay? I grew up in Webster, Massachusetts. Right. And my family are all from that area. Well, in my neighborhood, children were absolutely the safe that you could play and go anywhere. And nobody, and there was always, you know, the men, they, they all were factory men, and the, the, the women, too, worked and whatever. And there was always an adult sitting on the porch somewhere, just kind of looking over things. But we didn't feel supervised, but in reality we were. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't understand until growing up. One of my uncles, my Uncle Jack, who was well known to everyone outside the family at Sprang, he was the head of the local textile workers' union. Okay, so he was the head of that local. I think it was 249 or 259. My other uncle, Joe Hewlett, was the chief of police. And what's strange is I never understood it, but my side of the family would not speak to anyone involved with police. And, of course, as a kid, we don't know what's going on, but looking back, (laughs) I understand. My, My father was one of eight brothers. And they pretty much, until, you know, the 70s maybe, and nobody messed with, and I remember as a kid, things would, there would be someone would approach or something, and someone would say, are you a Manto girl? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, yeah. Which one, who's your father? Is it it this one or that one? And I'd say, that's my uncle. And they'd say, oh yeah, you're James's daughter. Okay. And they would kind of signal to everyone else, you don't touch this kid. Right. Right. So we all we all know. We all know we all know what a gang is. Your gang, your gang is a kid, my gang, 
right? We know, but let's yeah. talk. Let's get to the let's get to the real stuff about this online gang, right? And I'll, I'll name names if you're if you're not comfortable naming names, because I do know that you're having a problem. You, I've seen I see the videos. You got this, you know, you got this Lepo guy. You got this Dave Acton, this Thomas Schoenberger, this. Uh, I don't know about Steve Outram. Is he on your back as well? And, and a whole slew of other characters uh, are, are, seem to be uh, piling up on you for talking about this kind of thing. Now, my have, I have the same experience. that they, you know, I, I know all these characters, and I try not to talk about them because I'm a news guy. I, talk, I riff on the news. That's what I do. You know? But unfortunately, uh, these folks come at you. So where do you... Where do you stand on it? And I want to talk about what happened today with Texas and the uh, the explosion down there. Where where are you with these guys? Uh, are you being well, are you being attacked by a cult, a a, a, uh, a bunch of bullies, a bunch of scam artists, a bunch of extortionists, or is it all in your head, Denise? <laughs> I wish it were only in my head. Um, no, what what's going on here is a perfect storm of like three different threads coming together. One hmm. thread. You know, the gangs we were just talking about are the natural, organic, family, clan, tribal thing. Right. What's going on in YouTube is because of the technology of the Internet, one lunatic like that guy that, that you know, I described um, uh, being, you know, he's it, tracking my family and everything. I mean, basically, he was doing it on behalf of people that had these old school gang backgrounds. And he doesn't know who paid him or why. He just goes for it. Right. So here he is on the Internet, and all of a sudden you've got a situation where lunatics who have similar mental illnesses find each other. If you join one of these victim clubs, okay, a support group, narcissistic disorder support group, you can form a team of narcissistic. Let me stop if you there. Not- let, me, let me stop you there. That's an excellent point. So... You're saying that because of the vast size of the internet, that crazies, like-minded, broken people find each other and coalesce in a kind right. of... Right, and then okay. other people get over them and invite them into a, you know, people who need a leader right. wander around as little groups and then someone else comes along and says, hey, I can be your leader. And there you've got Tom Schoenberger. Right. Right, and there's, you know, yeah, right I'm now. Talking about acting, okay, something that 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 people need to understand what's going on here. Did you know that he graduated in 1985 from Corpus Christi College, which is now Texas A and M? Yeah, I, I did. I do know that. I know a lot about the guy because yeah. I have to. So his focus, the focus is on me. He's orchestrating something due to some. So he's got a wire crossed in his head. And he's orchestrating things. Right. So him and, and would you agree? Really spooky. Would you agree that Schoenberger and Acton are they're like the two pigs in, in Animal Farm? They're they're competing for the attention of the farm. Would you put them they're they're both leaders? They're leader. not competing. I think they're working together. You think they work together? They work together, but even in a gang, there's leader and co leader. And every once in a while, a gang a leader will knock off the other leader to take oh, full yeah. con- that sort yeah. of thing is what I'm talking about. I mean, that's my yeah, experience. It's like yeah. it's competitive narcissism. Right, right, right. Who can out screw the who could out uh, slime the other guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and they and now so we could call the clubhouse right of this group. Let's use this group. It's not the only group on on. Uh, the internet, but it's a, a really fascinating one because you and I both have, uh, and a lot of other people have, a personal experience with this group. So, so they they come together at the clubhouse right now. They have a club leader like the the uh, the maitre d or in Animal Farm the pig uh, squealer, right? Or one of those pigs, one of the pigs that rounded up the other animals, and that would be Lepo, right? Is it safe to say that they they come together on this site? And, and that's where the hate speech, they hate the guy on the screen, whoever's being projected on the screen, hate this person, convince the person 
convince the people in the chat that the person they're seeing is so sinful, is a pedophile, is a stalker, is a, is a child molester, is a murderer, murdered, right? Convince the people with absurdities that are in the group, and whoever believes it becomes part of that, that, uh, that uh, brainwashed crowd. Is that, is that a fair well, yeah. assessment? Look at, look at the clanging cowbell system and think about Pavlov's dogs. Right. Yeah. There yeah. you go, right there. It's a training ground. Now, if you were, let's, let's go back to the old days, okay? If you decided you were going to be the top dog in your neighborhood, right. you're going to get guys together in the street corner and flex your muscles and get new tattoos. But if you're going to be the top dog on the internet, then you're going to play games with these these mental training programs, and you're going to find a way to get people to coalesce in a place where you can affect them, and basically let that thing with that level character, that's like a street corner for people to, to, to play tattoo games, and unfortunately, other people coming along think it's a comedy routine. They don't understand that the whole thing with the cowbell and all that stuff, that actually has a scientific basis. If you spend time, just say, like, some of them will say, oh, I'm just going to have, you know, have it on while I do something. That's the worst thing you can do. When you have something on in the background, you're allowing your subliminal nerves to be clicked to it. Mm. And basically, they just get, he puts the cowbell over the words so that people will learn to hate on image, not even take time to find out what the person is saying. They're going to hate on image. Right. Good point. And, and I, I decided, I did, told him he does not have permission to use my stuff. I told him to stop it. Then he made it clear he wasn't going to stop unless I sue him. And I know that if I sue him, there'll be three others behind him. I'll have to sue them, so forget it. Okay. That's not the way to go. To do yeah, that's yeah. not the way to go. Let them, you know, I, 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 they use all my stuff too. That's fine. I don't care who yeah. uses what, but you are radicalizing. You're radicalizing people against someone like myself and someone like, you, like yourself. Someone like me who's just a reporter. Yeah, I, I talk about some sensitive stuff here and there. I, I'm not afraid to call out names and, and people, but it's like you're, you're programming people to hate. I want to get into the big picture because I know it's not just about why does someone like a Schoenberger or, or Dave Acton, why do they spend hours and hours and hours online willing to go into courts of law and lie uh, uh, if there's just all it is is just a game for them to, to uh, manipulate a few stupid people to uh, take orders to, I don't know, buy them coffee or whatever. There is a higher political... Uh, agenda. You, you agree with that, right? That there's, it's not just, it's not just. I think you're mistaking them for sane people. Because, yeah, for you and me, that would be a game. And we would fool around and laugh and ha ha. But for these guys, they believe what they're doing. They're, they're into their delusions, mm. and this is their life. It's scary. Yeah. But it is, they, yeah, it is. It's a, scar it's a scary notion because. If you have no information about, for example, the Lepo guy and his website, you go there, nothing is funny. There's, it's just, it's like, why are, people, why are people not able to see how ridiculous the, 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 the storylines are? It's all, all it is, it's not, about, it's not about current events. It's not about what's happening in the world. It's about cutting me, you know, medium to large or even small size people uh, up, just chopping them up. And what could be funny about and, that and if you weren't a psychopath? the smaller the better. I mean, right. that's why they go after retirees. And, and it isn't, they started to do a whole thing where they wanted to go after um, women in my age group. And that kind of got tired after a while. So now they're, I don't know what they're going after now, if they've got another wave going on or what. I think they're going after that guy in Australia and, and that gang. Mm. So they're getting into a slightly younger what, crowd the, there. The, the, the guy, the guy, which one? It starts with an O? The guy that's last uh, name starts with an O or the other guy? 
No, the one, that, the big fat rugby player. The uh, fat rugby player, I don't know. Jamie, Jamie's his name. I see, I see. So yeah, the, yeah. His thing is called Southern Truth, but it refers to Australia, not to the American South. Right. So how, I, what, what I want to know, I want to know is how did they approach you? How did you get, how did they suck you into this fist fight with these guys constantly? I'll tell you how they did it to me, but I want to hear how they did it to you. How do you think they did oh, no, it to you? It was, it was a decision on my part when I saw that particular man in my thing, my, my, my chat. I knew I was facing that gang, and I said, okay, I am going to smoke you out. And that actually is exactly what happened, because I finally, you know, my daughter's case has been reopened, partly because of the craziness it became to be obvious that, you know, this is not normal behavior on these people's part. But basically, all I did was I kept doing my show the way I wanted, you know, just talking about this and that and the other thing. And I would mention, and I had made a decision, I would just mention periodically without going into her story that my daughter died at UMass and I don't believe it was suicide. And then I would go back into my subject matter. That immediately caused, because no one who was not involved with that would pay attention. Right. Only the ones who were involved. And because I know the guy that was questioned is a narcissist. I knew he would have to keep coming, and if he was bringing his friends with him, we were going to find out who they were, and that's exactly what happened. And so, yeah, so you're doing still out there. But so you're doing your program. Case is reopened. So you're doing your program. You're doing your program. I want to understand this. You're doing your program. You're making your videos, and then what? They approach you in the comments. They approach you via email. Yeah, they're trolls. They just started trolling. Trolling, just harmless yeah. trolling, calling you names. Trying to well, trying trying to steer the conversation in a different direction, yeah. right? Well, there were two levels of trolling. One level was this personal level that most people, even those who were involved in it, just because they they do they jump on board because somebody puts a cute insult, they didn't know this guy was a specific person. Now the rest of it was the Q trolling, where you had that split happen, where the Q quiz got hijacked. By actually, this guy's gang was part of that cult, and that's where it got crazy because they went after everybody. They they went after. I think one of them had a bragging up that they had like a scorecard of two hundred sites, and there's another one. Uh, one of the ones that's in Lepo's group was talking about uh, um, going after a website, uh, a YouTube channel, as soon as it hits like. A thousand or two thousand. Pay attention to what they're doing, and if they're doing this topic, we'll go after them. In other words, they were looking for the propaganda line, and they approached me that way. They asked me, actually, during that encounter with that gang. Who? They who, asked who in the gang? Who, who? Who? Who in the gang? Who did it? Who approached when, you? When I first encountered, when I first did, the, okay, the two who came into my chat. You want me to name him? Yeah, please. I, I, okay, I Brian Birmingham. He keeps a low profile in YouTube, but he does have a profile, and he shows up frequently with a female name to act like he's an old lady crocheting and <laughs> gossiping about me. And he doesn't pull it off too well. Right. The other one is Tammy Mathis, the Winter Moon character. Those two, okay. they showed up. They're the ones who were using my daughter's photo. And by the way, for the record, I never touched anybody's photo from anywhere. Right. And she, you know, that's the story that they're spreading, but who cares? But the point is, that's when I saw that what was going on. And um, the rest of it was actually Q was a marketing plan. When they hijacked it, they were doing the propaganda. They wanted me to start doing coverage of the Sutherland Springs shooting. And they wanted me to start saying it was not real, it was fake, it was the inside job and all this stuff. And I said, I'm not even talking about that topic. So um, they were they were trying to influence your they were trying to influence your storyline through yeah. bully tactics. They're hanging they're out in your chest. They were trying to hijack my channel and Try if I hijack your channel. them, I would be another Yara Rock, you know. Right. That kind of thing. <laughs> so I didn't. What about why? What's wrong with Unirock? He went down the toilet? 
No, I mean, you know, I, I would be, I shouldn't have thrown anyone's name out because we get off track. Right, you yeah. know, I would have been big, is what I'm saying. I would have been the cool channel to come to. Oh, you no, you're cool the way you are because you're a natural. I, I like no, what I you know said. I am. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't like it, tough. <laughs> exactly. No, but I, I when I watched your when I watched your video and you explain this, it seems like you've got a you've got a handle a a handle on the 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 means by which people fall down the rabbit hole. It's oh, yeah. it's slick people that that prey on emotionally hurt people. We'll be your friend, and then as time goes on, oh by the way, we need this favor. Help us out. Don't you hate that person too? Show us how much you love yeah. us by hating them, right? Yeah. That, and then, and it's, then you do something stupid, and they blackmail you. And then they blackmail. Or they persuade it. you that they can. You do. You're completely innocent. I mean, look at what these people do. There's nothing wrong with putting up a PayPal button and saying my channel runs off donations instead of a Patreon subscription. No, that's not a crime. They've actually got people mm -hmm. believing. That to donate money to throw a dollar into a musician's guitar <laughs> case on the sidewalk is a crime. Right. I mean, it's I'm, ridiculous. You know, and they actually are blackmailing people because I've seen people say, "Oh no, no, I'm not doing anything bad because I'm not monetized." And I'm like, "What?" Another you know? one. Another one they do is, "Oh, you're connected to this one." Now, I've never met you before. I've never. This is the first time we're speaking. Correct. Right? Uh, it might be the second time. No, no, it was the first time. I, 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 I would never forget. I asked you once before, and you didn't. It didn't happen. And this is the first time you're calling. I called you, right? First time we're live speaking. Oh, that's right. right. The, you made some commentary about my channel, and they had a meltdown over it. And then. Right. Yeah. You and I, we had we, we we had some words, but we've we've uh, we've kissed and made up. That's that's fine. Yeah. No, see, yeah. I know. But I mean, you just you all you did was say what's 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 the deal with this, and all of a sudden we got crazy, and uh, it doesn't matter. But it does show you the manipulation because the point. I know there's 50 channels that say things that I don't like. I'm not going to worry about them. I just don't watch them. Right. Now the point I was trying to make is that. The, the narrative in this, in, this, um, in this particular LARP, this cult, this terrorist group, whatever you want to call them, uh, the, the, the narrative is that you and I are best friends, right? Because we both stand, we both see, if you see the ridiculousness of the group and you try to, to show them that ridiculousness and then they assault you, then you must be with the other one. And... That's guilt by association. First of all, I'm with the... The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's first of all. And that's a normal human behavior. I see that you see through them. Therefore, yeah, I am with you. But not in a, yeah. not in a criminal sense. Not in a conspiratorial sense. But in a, a spirited sense. Like, oh yeah, she gets it. She sees... I see what they're doing to her. The same that, that the cult approaches me the same way they did you. They infiltrate your, your comments. You have to sit there all day long and delete the comments, right? Um, so, so that's another smear. Oh, he's working with this one. I mean, I'm working with everyone, right, according to them. I've, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a murderer. I'm a pedophile. I'm a, I don't know what else they call me. I'm a, a uh, my teeth are fake. My hair is fake. Uh, you know, it's nothing... They're jealous of your hair. <laughs> I, I, well, they, they should be, really. I mean, because my hair is really beautiful. I, I, I mean, I, I wake up every day and I say, man, at 50, look at my beautiful hair. You know, and it's like that... <laughs> you should become a Rastafarian. I would <laughs> yeah. love to see your hair as a Rastafarian. It, it will dread. If I, don't, <laughs> if I don't comb my hair, it would dread very quickly, but I, I'm not going to go there. But my, but the point is, my hair is real. People that are watching right now could see it, you know. And, um, and but that's just the, the and that's funny to me because I'm I I got a sense of humor. I'm a funny guy. But when you start calling me saying he's got he's got ten felonies and he's a he's a pedophile, that is the, one of the most obscene things that you could say without evidence. And I think yeah. they're learning their lesson with with uh, Gabe Hoffman the. The uh, documentary filmmaker, what's his uh, 
Uh, what's the name of his his movie? I, forget, I always forget his name. The, an Open Secret. Yeah, An Open Secret, right? Here's a guy mm-hmm. who spends his money to to uh, make a, a documentary about child molestation in Hollywood and shows yeah, well, you... Yeah, what's Bell now is because he is someone who could invest, who, who had money to invest mm-hmm. and do this, he's not relying on this little street club of, you know, um, um, band together people. And, and this is the other thing, when you start getting into that topic, yeah. They try to oversimplify it. And when I started making some videos, and I approached it a while back, of the differences in the question of what is a pedophilic crime, just trying to make some common sense here, um, like the difference between a man who is in trouble because he messed with a, a, a teenage girl, but she was physically a mature woman. And so he's a sex offender. But he is quite different from the man who is aroused when looking at a very small child. You're looking at two completely different situations. But these people, with their hysteria, and and they're not hysteria, it's not sincere hysteria, they're using it as a smear hysteria, they're lumping everything in together. So they, they can smear somebody over all kinds of stuff and get, and the thing with the cowbell clicks in because they can get people so angry that they won't even bother to check and see if they got the right guy. Yeah. I, yeah, I couldn't wa- I can't watch that uh, Lepo thing. I have to, t- I turn the volume off sometimes just to, just to surf and see the, so I, so I document the uh, people commenting so we know who they are. Yeah, that's the, the, that's the best way to have to deal with it because yeah. I only glance at it now and then to see, and then I I pop in and look. Okay, what are they up to? But um, it, it's it's the process is what I'm watching. I'm I'm actually yeah. watching the process of how they're doing it, and when people really get involved, I start looking at what's their motivation and because I'll tell you, you want to know why it's a little bit of a study Be, beyond the personal uh, conflict that has erupted in my life over this. I did design in, when I was in college, I studied to be curriculum design. Mm -hmm. And I actually designed a major homeschool curriculum that was accepted by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for K through three. But in the process of dealing with the whole homeschool issue, which is not what the media tells you it is. I mean, this was back in the 70s, and it was really much more complex and not this weird stuff. But um, I, I had to study a lot of that psychology and how people learn and what they learn, and that's why I started noticing the cult stuff uses very specific learning tech, tracks that were going into the curriculum. And in fact, another reason why I was on the radar to be stalked and harassed was that my um, I provided documentation in the in a New York school case, okay. uh, Denazi DeBerry v. Bedford. I think that was in 1992 or three. The trial went through in '94. It was a school sex abuse case, civil lawsuit. And the investigators included state police level, and I provided materials and commentary that were handed to with the expert witness. The expert witness was Father Mitch Pakla, you know, Catholic priest, and well, boy, they're all going to go off with that into conspiracy land. But he was the expert witness, and the trial got whittled down. They threw out all the sexual issues, and they narrowed it down to... Uh, ridiculous stuff, and then they made a decision on that, and then they buried the case. But that was in the, you know, so I've been, this has been the topic for me, cultural psychology, you might call it, Mm -hmm. really from the very beginning. It was part of my art form, it was part of my studies, and now it's part of this. Right. Yeah, it is a fascinating psychology, the online and it's new because, hey, the Internet is only 20 years old, right? And we're seeing this 
this very, very uh, seductive, you know, these very seductive rabbit holes, these covens, these, these things. So let's, let's, um, let's flip to something more specific. I want people to understand a specific incident, for example, right? How, how it works. Because again, you explain this to people uh, and they tell you, oh, you're crazy, you're paranoid. Just leave them alone. You say, you can't leave them alone. They just, they, they, they keep, they keep coming at you and you have to keep slapping them down. You know, it's, it's like playing ping pong. But the incident this morning, Right, in the port city of, what's it called, Nieves or New, what's the... Port Natchez. It's out in the yeah. Boyarzer area, just south of Houston. Right. It's north of Corpus Christi, but it's on the, it's right on the outskirts of Houston. Right, so, so a blazing fire breaks out, a half-mile mushroom of fire and toxic fumes leaking into the community, right? An explosion in the port of, of Nietzsche, Right. Now, who do we know that what that that did a bomb hoax in the port of Charleston, right? The same man who's trying to identify me with the environmentalists who go around doing that kind of thing. That's who put that out. Right. So and it was I am the, not part of that movement. Right. At so all. so the Swaggered Brothers, right? The Swaggered Brothers. So you know, if you want to create sensationalism about all the poison stuff, you live in New York City. Right. And I am not going to be dragged into that profile. Right, right. Yeah, who, me? Because no, no, I see where this is going. No, 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 no. Listen to me. This is where it's going. This is where it's going. The, 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 the incident that I want to talk about is I want to sh- I, I have, I played on a, a previous video where Acton is accusing, he's accusing uh, me and, uh, and Jason Goodman of manipulating you to allow us... I don't even watch Goodman's channel. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm pointing, don't, kindly, please, don't be, I'm not trying to be offensive to you. I'm just trying to no, point I'm out... No, I'm laughing, I'm laughing. I'm trying to point out the ridiculousness of the video that that um, Schwager puts out, right? D. George yeah. Schwager, right? He puts out this video, I'm trying to find it right now, and uh, we'll, we'll, I'm just going to play a little bit of it. Right? It was really super crazy. Just so long. So there was this lady in Corpus Christi, and she was all upset and anti-government because her daughter was murdered, and it was never... You could hear that, right, Denise? Yeah. I ...investigated. See, this is a move... <laughs> let me, let me just... People, let me okay. just... He Denise, threatened, Denise. He threatened you last. <laughs> I, I do, but I want people to hear, let, let people hear the recording first so that they can enjoy what we've already enjoyed. Yeah, just stand okay. by, just stand by. I'll, I'll, I'll untrigger myself. <laughs> All right, just stand by. Movie plot, it's called Corpus Christi. Corpus Crispy, that's the name of the movie. So she's putting out all this stuff on social media about how much she hates the government. And there's these two jerks in New York City, and one used to own a drone company and the other was a disgruntled worker for a trash company. And so they kind of picked up on her. These t- so, so right there, you see, you see the connection, oh, yeah. right? We're all, we're, we're all, I'm sorry, I'm yelling in your ear. We're all in the LARP here. We're all in the story. You're in Corpus Christi, and there's two idiots in New York who don't even, I mean, I've been on Jason Goodman's show twice. You know, he's never been on my show. I haven't talked to the guy in two years until he stuck an umbrella in my face. But there is no, that's a ridiculous, even if we were best friends, it wouldn't matter. That's the point, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, I know. That's <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's, it's an irrelevant it's point. Yeah. It's an irrelevant point. But, but you see where he's, he's whipping up this conspiracy that somehow all of these people are working together. And if you believe this line of shit, Right? If you're someone stupid enough to believe this, then you are, are then, it's almost like the religion. You're put into the pew. You're given a yeah. seat in the audience where you can then hate these three people, right? Yeah. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, let's, it's, let me, like, it's like George Orwell's five-minute hate break at work. <laughs> right, right, right. The, the, it's, I think it was three minutes of hate, but let's, let's continue. Let's con- let, I just want to continue a little bit. Two guys made a lot of videos together. They hang out with each other. They shop together. False. And so they said, hey, we could exploit her. 
we could exploit her. This was just in the dream. It was a dream. And so, I'm like, how do you want to exploit her? Well, the LNG, liquid natural gas tankers, go right by her house in Corpus Christi. They go right by her house. And these two guys are thinking to themselves, we could go down there and kind of hold her hostage and use her house as a command post. And I know it gets pretty bizarre thinking about somebody like Denise. I mean, she's a cutout. Right? I, so it, it's triggering, right? It's triggering to listen to these... But I'll tell you something about that. Right. The other guy, that Brian Birmingham character, yeah. he was posting death fantasies about myself and other people, um, particularly a, a, another couple my age. But these were death fantasies, extremely similar. These people are working out of the same playbook. Right. And it was those death fantasies, which were a couple months after my daughter died, that the um, Weymouth police in Massachusetts actually questioned him because they were concerned that other people were also going to be killed. Now, she did not die in Weymouth, but he lived in Weymouth. How do you, I want to ask you, how do you feel when you listen to something like this? You said triggered. You listen to someone who you don't know, who you'd rather not know, that you wish would go away, slandering you in a five-minute video and and saying that you're going to be kidnapped by two thugs from New York oh. and and, a, and who want to fly a flame-throwing dro drone over a boat in Corpus Christi and blow up uh, three square miles of, of radius. That's You're in this story, and so am I. How, how yeah. is it? And, and it's not the only one. There's a... There's, this, you know, oh, I've got, go I've got third. Just let go because I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. I'm not triggered because I understand how ridiculous it is. Right. Um, I understand that whether these guys are uh, believing their own fantasy or whether they think they're playing a game. Someone has said that it was like a game for points or something. Whatever they're doing, um, they've got attention of people that have nothing to do with me and I didn't have to call anybody because these idiots, they think that because maybe their video gets 50 views or whatever it is, yeah. nobody really knows about it, but they don't know who those 50 are. Yeah, but I, 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 so I'll just... I'm not worried, but what, but what does trigger anybody yeah. is if you don't know why they're doing it and how it works and because I know why they're doing it, it's part of a giant scam I look at it that way okay I know why the guy's doing it and the second level is how it works it works on people not knowing the reality not knowing the the like um, I don't want to really stick on this subject because of the court thing but the other things that they do is they trigger people with lawsuits but if you actually listen to their language they don't even know how the law works. Right. So if you know a little bit about this is not how it works, you're not triggered. Right. Right. That's why my landlord could laugh at them when they threatened him. He just said, okay, fine. Right. You know, and he it's just a piece of paper. And, it's a piece of paper with, with a smart judge that yeah, looks at it and says... The piece of paper never arrived. The only paper that ever arrived was when Tammy Mathis Netflix. Uh, uh, an order to me that I'm being ordered, and also the emails from Dave Acton. They're called spoliation, and he pretends that he's with the evidence team that's investigating me. And those emails he has sent to every single city and county and state official in Texas. So he has been on their radar since I think that started back in September. Right. So, so he's, it's just part of, it's part of his bully thing. He he spams people with stupid email. But I want to I want to yeah. I want to drive demanding, He's been threatening them if they don't do their job. Right. So he's on their radar. Right. Well, he, I think he's on the radar of the judge that he's trying to snow job right now in New York uh, against Goodman. Now, Goodman's no saint, but but uh, in, my, in my estimation, someone who has been in a lot of lawsuits uh, looked at some of the preliminaries, and he's, he's clearly lying, and the judge knows it. And now it gets dropped yeah. down to a smaller magistrate who 
you know, goes through the nuts and bolts of it. And then ultimately that same judge will decide the, the lower yeah. judge makes a decision and the, and, but the, but the upper judge, the real federal judge, uh, decision is binding, but, but here, here's the deal, right? We listened to Schwager whip his conspiracy two days ago. And today, a port blows up in on the coast of Texas. Well, you know, there's, there are always, first of all, the port did not blow up, okay? So let's be real here. Okay. A chemical right. plant. Okay. A chemical plant blew up. Okay. Or part of it blew up. Now, that kind of thing happens regularly in wherever you are in the world. Um, now they're going to take what I just said and turn it into a crazy headline. It's not a crazy headline. You know, if I tell you there's going to be a blizzard disaster in, in yeah. your part of the country, you know that sooner or later that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's life. And as far as the fact that we live in a world where we have chemical plants, these things happen. Right. Private citizens like you and me don't have anything to say about it. And I'm not part of any... Crazy. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think you are. What I did was, uh, Mr. Acton is now on the FBI yeah, radar. I'm saying that for general. I'm trying to point out that if people understand how it works, right? You predict a disaster, and you keep predicting a disaster, and saying this blizzard that's going to hit New York is Marcus Conti's fault because he refused to cut his hair. Right, right. <laughs> and sooner or later, it's going to happen, and somebody is going to hit you with a snow shovel, and then, you know, uh oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'll trigger something. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? See how it yeah. works? Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, the odds are if, you, if you, you throw out 10 pieces of garbage, one will stick. <clears throat> that's another way they do that's what That's what George Webb does. Yeah. He throws out 10 or 20 ridiculous statements about politics day after day and and then one day one of them one of his idiotic statements sticks and he rolls the tape back and see and says see i was right see i was right i was right about that but you, you were wrong about 99 other things right right <laughs> yeah and plus this idea now where you are you keep thinking that Fort Natchez is not far from here because on a map it doesn't look that far but actually I think it's, it would be the same as if something happened down at the southern part of New Jersey compared to where you are. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw, I saw the map. I, had, I pulled the map up and looked at it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many miles. Let's see. It's, uh, but there was... There was um, it looks like about 200. Uh, it's a little further than Jersey. It's like 200 miles away. Yeah. It's night, it's, it was, so people could see the map right now. Corpus Christi... Um, yeah, but the point is, again, the point is there's some crazy guy talking about a flame throwing drone and, and then a, a port blows up and that his crazy brother was allegedly arrested for blowing, for calling in a dirty bomb and, and the narrative continues, right? But right. Uh, well, then there's also the fact that he's pulling, he, for some stupid reason, he's pulling in the Southern District of New York, and he's got that website up to create a false impression that, yeah, that he's the court. That, that it's the court website, and it's talking about me. Right. And, and me he too. Wrote that article. <laughs> right. He writes all the shit. It's one. It's a. It's a. It's a blog. So we're giving this this one character a lot of, a lot of space here. It's almost unnecessary, yeah. you know. But it does it does define to wrap it up. We'll start to wrap it up. The, it defines the the idea that we are we are seeing cults and gangs, the, the phenomena of QAnon, where it's a kind of a grooming area where then you know, savvy kind of grifters come in and pick off people to radicalize, to do the dirtiest of the dirty yeah. work. Blow something up. The obituary up. grifters. Blow somebody I'm up. I guarantee Punch. you, he's going to be taking that article and trying to spread it around Port Arthur so right. that they'll see my face and the people who are suffering are going to see my face. But he's not understanding that People aren't stupid, okay? This is Texas. 
Right. We may be dumb, but we ain't stupid. It's right. He's he's a, he's he's spreading. He's using propaganda to promote the hatred of the characters that he plans to use as patsies, so that he can parlay. Yeah, but, but they know about this kind of activity yeah, because sure. it goes on all the time. Right. It's like oh, another one. Oh, you mean he didn't invent it? <laughs> Excuse me. He no, didn't. He didn't, he, invent, he didn't it. invent it. Okay. All right. So, so yeah. the so these cults, these cults uh, are they are they terrorists? Did they cross the line into terrorism? Do you think? Yes, because what you have you start out with people who just band together over um, sympathy over individual tragedy. Right. Then you ramp it up. You ramp it up to the group level, and then. These, like I say, these people like Brian Birmingham, he was kicked out of the Army, and I think his training might have included some of this stuff for propaganda. He was kicked out for what he was doing in the Army. And he was then, so, and he studied psychology at UMass. He was a student at UMass at the time that my daughter was killed. He was, and you know, oh, another name, Craig Gutzel ca- called up the name of, of Steve Hassan just in last week, I think. Hassan was, he was on Hassan's payroll from July of 2010 to sometime in 2015. And Hassan, the Boston anti-cult expert, was in fact in contact with my family over cult issues that were, were private accusations that were being made by a Catholic fanatic sister of mine and the fact that I was allowing my daughter to study yoga. Okay. So that, but that was a private dispute. But I knew when I saw Birmingham what had happened in his whole setup with Steve Hassan. Now, Steve Hassan is being coming into view on Greg Gutzel's Fox News program as somebody who's claiming that all of Trump's supporters, if you so much as think Trump is doing a good job, you are cult brainwashed. And that's the propaganda part. Mm, right. Now, they may say I'm playing into it, but it's been going on in reverse for a long time. And I'm pointing at the facts of who these people are and what they've been doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, now, no that's doubt. a whole other rabbit hole right there. It, it is a rabbit hole, it, and it is real, and it does border on. It is a new phenomenon. It's not like it's. It's not like it's brand new. There's always been gangs. There's always been. There's always been bad people in the world that want to hurt other people, you know. And yeah. and but but here we have these these this this group of grifters. We can call them gangs. We can call them cults of sorts. You know, sort of like a religion, sort of like a. I, I like gang a little better than cult, but and they and then they are they are programmed to attack to hate on Q, on yeah. something, <laughs> and then and then that that hate is then harvested. Say when an election rolls around, hate Bernie Sanders. Put a picture of Bernie Sanders up there. Bang the cowbell, and we hate him. What did he say? I don't know, but I hate him. I, yeah, I hate him before. I, now, orange man bad. bad. Right, orange man bad. Bernie, Bernie's a communist. Hillary Clinton, lock her up. It, it works. I mean, she should have been locked up, but nonetheless. Yeah, this, sometimes they're hitting on the truth. But <laughs> the thing is, the whole Hillary Clinton lock her up, that wasn't because of that. In fact, what they will do is they'll take a real situation, and that's what they've done with this whole pedophile thing. They'll yeah. take a real problem... And then, knowing that they can't deny the real problem, they'll create the circus alongside it. Right. So that you get, it, it, it creates a fog bank around the real problem, so you can't get at the real problem. Right. And that's where a lot of that comes in. Right, right. No, no doubt. That's the essence of good politics, right? So you have a political yeah. agenda. Now we're going we're gonna to see all this on steroids, by the way, is my prediction, because now we're entering into the presidential elections the money is going to start flowing out of the corporations into the super PACs. The super PACs are going to approach the internet to try to, to try to control that narrative. The troll armies are going to come out. The, 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 the hysteria, try to turn the, the censorship, chopping people off that they don't agree with. It's going to turn into a circus like it, it did in 2016. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? And they're also going to use the tried and true political tactic of scapegoating. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank, Denise, thank you so much. You're not crazy. I, I assessed, I've, just, I've diagnosed you as not crazy. I never thought you were crazy. Huh? <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you were, they were driving you crazy. You know what I mean? That's, there's a difference. Well, they would if I let them. Yeah. You know, you get, you get, you get wrapped up in it. And I've always said, I think I said it to you you a while ago, the way to, the way to win this kind of charade is to expose it. What we're doing now, we're talking about it. We're talking about, you know, how it feels to be stalked by a bunch of nobodies Right, these nobodies, grifters, looking to to make a profit on your pain. No, yeah. Right? yeah. See, they they think they can affect you because you're not going to survive without their yeah. um, love and support. And it's like, <laughs> no, I never needed your love no. and support. In the first no, place. you can no. go go fucking burn in hell. The other thing is yeah. is is how many more people get sucked into this? Because I believe when you when you analyze one of these groups. All you have is people that are terrified of the of the bullies, the lead bullies of the group, that I hope they don't treat me like that, right? And you have the people, yeah. you have the people that truly believe they're the the pets, you know, they're the pets of the thing. They're the the true patsy, the people that really believe it, like they believe. Yeah, like that, that guy who went and shot the the Gambino. Exactly, he was a believer. I mean. He was smiling to the end, believing that he was operating. He thought he was a martyr. He was, he was doing the work of President Trump and that Trump was going to come in in the end and save him. Yeah. He believed that. Yeah. That's what he told. That's what his lawyers told, uh, you know, told, uh, told the court. It's, it, but the people that did that to him have nothing to do with Trump. And in fact, from what I can see, are very effectively not they're not being effective, but they're very strenuously trying to discredit reasonable people, and that's where they discredit themselves because everyone can see the difference between a fanatical cluster and the entire population. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Listen, Denise, we're over, we're at an hour. <laughs> oh, we're only supposed to be 30 minutes. People, you know, people start losing their uh. The train of thought, but and so am I. But the um, uh-huh. it's been an excellent, excellent talk. It's this is what this is. Um, I got truth on the wall behind me. You got I put truth under your name and truth convoy, and <laughs> it's it's our truth. It's people need to 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 call it out. At you know, it's not it's not like it's not like you're a bad guy for for pointing, you know, pointing your finger at bad activity. And trying to wake people up to, you know, sp- make up your own mind. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. Yeah. And now I'm rambling. Yeah. So we are done. Uh, um, so you can visit Denise at uh, Truth Convoy, Denise Matow, Truth Convoy. There's a lot of videos up there. Uh, check it out. She's a, uh, someone that I feel is, is speaking, you know, truth to these idiots uh, that ultimately sends a message to real power to... Uh, you know, you can't just run over regular people, you know, and that's, uh, that's the reality of it. So, uh, so, uh, Marcus Conte reporting.